Well, I guess it's into another edition of the uh, Radio K. Bob James here at Radio BB Girl International. Sing so and Clive Kilo. And the new band Shortwave. And a very special edition of the Radio K. This time. As you know, you've been listening to Radio BB Girl International for any length of time. We're running our winter competition. Well, one of our sponsors, one of our advertisers, and one of the people who have a very nice prize up for grabs on that competition is John Hudson. Now, John is co founder of the company that makes SDR Play, one of those software defined receivers that you can use. And you've not heard of how bad one of these things is. Well, I'll tell you what, John is our guest on the show. We'll be hearing from him in just a little while explaining about uh, the piece of equipment, the SDR play, what it'll do, how much fun it is, and what you can learn and experience from it. So we'll be chatting to John in just a little while, and of course, loads of great music from Radio Me Go International. Good day to you, Bob James here at the Radio Game with this from Tom Tessie. Ready, me, me, go international. Right, SDR Play, one of those fabulous SDR Play software defined receivers is up for grabs. On Ready, me, me, go with our winter competition. This week's question coming up in just a little while. But it's welcome back, really, to uh, the uh, co founder of SDR Play, John Hudson. And just in case you missed the, uh, the last time we spoke to John, let's just recap, John, if you would. What exactly is an SDR Play? Okay, so an SDR receiver um, is unlike a traditional receiver where pretty much everything was done in hardware with an SDR um, a lot of what was traditionally done in hardware is now done in software so in the case of the uh, SDR play the hardware does all the upfront in the case of the uh, SDR play the hardware does all the upfront filtering amplifying mixing and then sends a digital uh, signal into a host computer so that digitized signal is then processed within the computing environment using software to actually do the rest of the processing and it allows for uh, a lot better performance than you could traditionally get with um, fixed hardware components that have to be a bit of a compromise across whatever you happen to be doing. So basically, in a nutshell, you get one of these SDR plays, you plug it into your PC, and the whole radio world is at your fingertips, isn't it? That's right. I mean, there's, one of the great things is that, and particularly with our uh, radios that we've built, we've got a very, very wide spectrum. Ours go from like very long wave down at uh, one kilohertz, all the way up to two gigahertz, which is microwaves. Spotting DX stations on shortwave, and for radio hams, what you can visualize in one go is the whole of a broadcast band or even multiple bands and actually visualize and see the signal. So probably the big, big difference compared to a traditional radio where you just had a, a tuning knob and a dial. Here you actually on a PC display see in glorious HD quality the actual spectrum and all the signals appearing as little waves going up and down according to, to how strong they are. Fabulous, the man from Steely Dan, Donald Fagin and the Nightfly. Uh, John Hudson is our guest on the uh, Radio Cave this time round from Radio Maybe Go International. John, of course, co-founder of SDR Play. You can win one of those. Uh, talking about the uh, things that you can do with one of these, and the, and the fascination about a software-defined receiver goes so much further than just listening to radio stations and possibly radio amateurs and other things. We had a report recently, didn't we, that there was some uh, signals received from outer space, repeating signals that could indicate alternative life out there somewhere. How about an SDR play and signals from outer space, John? That, that's right. I mean, there's a lot you can do uh, below two gigahertz in terms of radio astronomy. You can pick up bodies like uh, Jupiter. We have these various meteor showers. There was one on January the 3rd, 4th. Uh, what you can do is you can tune to a strong ground station frequency. You won't hear that frequency. Um, as those meteors streak across the sky, you just suddenly have that signal uh, bouncing off the meteor, off the ionized path that the tumbling meteor creates for, um, uh, it actually goes on for quite a, quite a lot longer than the time you see it in the sky because there's an ionized trail 
left, which uh, then allows the VHF frequency, which normally wouldn't bounce back to Earth, will actually get reflected back. So that's something that a lot of people do. Uh, actually, coming up, there's things like uh, passive radar, which is a way of actually mapping even aircraft just using the passive reflections of uh, FM broadcast signals. Actually, our top of the range RSP duo does provide for phase coherent multiple inputs. Experimentation is happening more and more, and uh, in fact, we've just announced um, a university, well, a kind of educators program to sort of encourage more of that, and uh, that can be found just by going to sdrplay.com slash educators. Mi amigo. Radio Mi Amigo International, 6085 kilohertz, 49 meter band, shortwave, and of course online, www.radiomiamigo.international. On the website, all sorts of options there, the winter competition, all the details of that you will find. And uh, because of that, and because one of the top prizes on that winter competition from Radio Mi Amigo International is a SDR Play, one of those fabulous receivers. Plug it into your computer and you can turn any PC into a really rather special audio visual receiver, all sorts of fun and games. This is why John Hudson is with us. Now, John is CEO and founder of SDR Play, and of course, one of the important parts of any receiver setup is the aerial system, and uh, we often do reception reports here on this show, the Radio Cave, of course, uh, from Mi Amigo, and uh, quite often people talk about magnetic loop antennas. But John, tell us what one of them is, please. The simplest antennas that people tend to use, if they've got the space, is a wire antenna. And if we're talking as I think particularly a lot of the listeners here are, about shortwave and below, then the wavelengths are many, many metres long. So you need to have lengths of wire that are of the order of at least a quarter of a wavelength, which as you get down to 49 metre band or 41 metre band means, you know, 10 metres. So you need a good, a good length and it does need to be, you know, well above the ground. The fact that space can be a premium with the issue that the electrical interference of more and more gadgets and everything from broadband modems, power line modems, uh, LED controllers, plasma TVs and so on, the environment can be quite uh, hostile when it comes to picking out these smaller DX signals out of the noise. So this is where a thing called a mag loop or magnetic loop can come in very, very handy. And there are some great active magnetic loops now becoming available. So if you imagine that the radio waves have an electrical and a magnetic component, all the different frequency waves touch your long wire antenna, we're relying very much with our wire antenna on the electrical signal, which means all the other electrical noise gets picked up. If you make a loop antenna, this then allows the magnetic component to develop. But at that point, you've now got, just as you had with your electrical antenna, a very weak electrical component, which is induced by the magnetic pickup of the loop. But for practical purposes, especially if you're stuck on a, you know, all you've got is, a, is an apartment balcony or something, you're going to be restricted to a loop you know, which is probably a meter or so diameter. But the cool thing that's come out in the last few years is the active magnetic loop antenna, because now the electronics is so good. With a little box, some of these magnetic loops provide very, very good coverage from just maybe a few kilohertz up to many tens of megahertz. There's a very famous UK brand, which is the Wellbrook. These are very good, but the other company that we've been very impressed is Bonito. It's a German company, B-O-N-I-T-O. And these broadband antennas are becoming very popular and they do pick up signals where you might struggle due to all this uh, growing electrical interference. So I think the other thing is with all this stuff, I do encourage people to join one of the forums, the Facebook groups. Uh, there's a Facebook group. If you just go to Facebook groups and type in SDR Play, it's a closed group. It's a very friendly community of about 10,000 users there. And if you have questions or want to find out more and get practical feedback from people who've actually got these loops and are using them in specific uh, locations, in specific circumstances, it's a super way to really learn more before jumping in and actually getting one.
International. Bob James here on the Radio Cave, Supremes, of course, and Reflections. John Hudson is with us, uh, co-founder of SDR Play. You can win one of those. Go and have a look at the Radio Me Amigo International website, www.radiomeamigo.international. All the details of the competition, how you can enter it, what the prizes are, and lots more besides. And uh, one of those prizes is an SDR receiver. John is behind the company that makes it. And we're uh, talking about some of the uh, the things, the, uh, the fascination of analog technology, where the chips came from, and lots more besides, John. There's a lot of people, sort of, should we say, more elderly, probably like me, who came to electronics through ham radio 40 or 50, 45 years ago, gosh, as a teenager, new teenagers who are discovering radio from the world of, you know, the Raspberry Pi and the computing end of things. So, great process. We've been going now for over four years since we introduced our first R. P1 and uh, we've had a very very good relationship with the chip company that enables all this is a company called Mirix who originally developed this technology actually for the cellular phone market before smartphones really took off it looked like they might need to do all sorts of broadcast reception well of course the world changed along came 4G 5G interestingly even the top brands of smartphones now they don't even offer a FM radio that's when the chip, the clever chip development was done that we're able to use in the RSP. So it's been a really fun transition taking this technology and applying it to this, what is rapidly becoming the kind of go-to SDR receiver for everyone from experimenters to hobbyists. It's sort of a, turning into a kind of useful lab tool as well. I mean, I haven't even got onto some of the techie things you can do in terms of spectrum analysis, power measurement, if you want to do field strength measurements, you can do that really accurately. You can actually use this as a very, very good radio, can't you? Just If, if you just want to listen to the FM station down the road, Radio Me Amigo International, you've got to find Radio Caroline on AM. There is an absolute world of stuff out there, even for somebody who's really not into the, the high-tech end of it. That, that's right. It's a perfect companion for a computer. As long as you've got a, an antenna of some sort connected, a Logitech $20 PC speaker set actually can sound pretty good. Spent an extra ten dollars or so, and um, you really into some really good hi-fi. I mean, that's the one thing that that I really have noticed uh, listening to uh, well, me and Migo. Obviously, we listen to uh, to that quite a lot, and the quality is way way better than you ever would have thought uh, in the old days of shortwave radio. I mean, obviously, a lot of the receivers, that they weren't that good on AM, but uh, the quality is actually superb. Uh, yeah, on a, on a traditional receiver, you just had the choice of, you know, 3 kilohertz, 6 kilohertz, whatever it was. I mean, you could open up to 20 kilohertz and more. And if that's, if the signal's really, really strong, like FM quality, but on, on AM shortwave, you can get that.